Father in heaven, please have mercy and help me this morning. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning, friends. It's a dreary day here. Rain starting to fall, but a beautiful time to sit down, share a few thoughts about the goodness of God. Darlene and I have just been uh, celebrating 43 years of marriage. I have discovered that my wife is described in Proverbs chapter 31. It says in verse uh, 10, uh, Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is above rubies. Well, you can't buy one. You can't sell one. This kind of woman can only be uh, sent from God, and her heart is given. And this is the kind of wife I have. You know, verse 11, it says, The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. You know, without trust, what kind of relationship can you have? And I trust my wife with my life and vice versa. You know, she's, a, she's, she's, she's quite a, a faithful wife. And then in verse 12, she'll do me good and not evil all the days of her life. It's a lifetime commitment. It's a trust relationship with a lifetime commitment. You can't get a lifetime warranty in this world anymore. But a lifetime commitment from my wife. She told me, you know, last year, she said, if, if I have one breath left in me, I'll take care of you until the day I die. And as we look back, over, as I look back over the last 43 years of marriage, a lot of good memories. And you know, friends, we take our memories to heaven with us. You know, the body stays behind. We get a new body. Everything is made new. But we take our, uh, our memories with us to heaven. And if you think, you know, as I think about it too, it's kind of some of the strange things that, that stick out in my mind. I remember when Darlene and I moved out to the country for a time we lived in a ford station wagon <laughs> you know that sounds strange as far as a good memory and, and we weren't christians and we were living in a station wagon and this was in the winter and it was very very cold and then when we finally moved out of the car we moved into the cabin i was building it didn't it only had like the, the studs up the little if you don't know what a stud is it's the little two by fours that hold up the ceiling didn't have any walls on. This is winter time. Snow is blowing in. And Darlene and I are sleeping in the floor in sleeping bags. And uh, it stands out as a memory. And then, of course, in order to make a few dollars to pay our bills, Darlene was a potter. She made handmade pottery. And this is a picture of, of where she worked. I built a little shack off of an old barn, and uh, it had a dirt floor. And Darlene would make pottery in there, and then she would fire them in a kill, which was in a shed with a dirt floor. This is winter time, and the time in the car, and the time in sleeping in the sleeping bags on the floor in the cabin with no walls, and out there working in miserable, cold, wet conditions. I never heard Darlene complain once, never. And uh, those are good memories we take to heaven. You know, in the spring of 1990. We left Erlanger Hospital, and a uh, child had died. We were headed home, just Darlene and Darlene and I were in the truck together. And, uh, you know, we'd been in a very artificial environment, you know, from Wildwood Hospital to Redmond Park Hospital to Erlanger Hospital, a very uh, challenging uh, several days. It was such an artificial environment compared to where we'd been out in the country, in the middle of nowhere, you know, growing in food in our garden. So we got home and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, got home, back to the garden. My friends, it's just what we needed. When we got out into the garden, here's some pictures of our garden, and it, it was lush. We had put just mountains of grass clippings, some hay, some, uh, I don't know what all we got, uh, different kinds of uh, things we could add to the soil. The garden was a place to heal, to find peace of mind. So we got out there, started working in the garden. By the way, on the 43rd anniversary, <coughs> Darlene shoveled horse manure in the garden, <laughs> trying to give the plants some food. When you put your hands to work, anything that changes the pattern of circulation in the body, and work does, changes the firing patterns of your mind. So as you engage your hands in useful labor, it soothes and helps the mind. And Darlene, we're finding that to be true out there in the garden as we were working. This is my wife working the hoe. Now, she won't need to go to the gym. 
because as she works the hoe, the hoe works her. And this is how we, uh, this is how my wife stays in such fit shape. Gets up, walks three miles in the morning, grabs hold of the hoe, the hoe grabs hold of her, and she's got her cardiovascular fitness right here in the garden. And getting the sunshine, fresh air blowing through, had a good breakfast this morning. This is God's plan for sustaining us mentally, physically, and spiritually, also called hoe work in the garden. You know, it's sitting in, it's April 1990. The garden is, uh, it needs work and we're working and slowly but surely we're uh, recovering in our, in our health, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. It's just what we needed. Now, while we were at Wildwood, uh, we found out they had a health food store. And Darlene and I, we were, we were big into health now. You know, we stopped eating meat. We were kind of getting toward a whole food plant-based diet. I, I was, uh, had gotten that uh, counsel on Dr. Cherney from cheese. I was reading about cheese and it might not be the best food, high in saturated fat, cholesterol. So I was reading about the cheese and we were uh, contemplating making more changes. And we heard that Wildwood had a, had a health food store. And we had a good experience here in the hospital. So we went back and we started shopping for our beans, organic beans and things like that at the Wildwood store. Now back then, today it's kind of a large operation, but back then, you know, more than 30 years ago, it was just a, a, a place in a warehouse and it wasn't very fancy, but the lady there running the store, I'll never forget her. She's a friend even until this day. Her name was Jeanette Atwood. Here's a picture of her. I don't have a picture from 30 years ago. This is this precious woman today. Her name is Jeanette. And uh, we began to shop there and we got to know Jeanette. And I remember one time we ordered some B12 and we were going to pick it up the next time we got there. And as we came the next week, I asked her if the order had come in and she apologized that it had not. She was so sorry the B12 hadn't arrived. And I thought, this is an interesting person. You know, to meet somebody so concerned about our B12, it's just, it was, uh, that was just the beginning of a friendship that's lasted more than three decades. And so we were buying our, uh, our health food at the Wildwood store, getting to be friends and uh, getting things begin to normalize again. And then I was at home one day. This is probably in the midsummer of 1990. You know, I'd stopped drinking many, many months before, but I got an invitation. Darlene and I were invited to this party at this place in the town next door. And they said there, there's going to be a keg of beer there. And that old, you know, yearning, that craving, for a drink came back and we uh, decided to go to that party and it was in my mind I had every intention of going down there and drinking and as Darlene and I walked out of the house to get into our car the lady that had opened the door at the hospital Katie Sigsworth Katie the nurse that led us into the hospital that was so kind to us she and her husband uh, his name was Dean. He had two children. She, her husband, Dean, they drove up in an Opal Cadet Green Station wagon. And I looked at them. They got out and just said, hi, how you doing? <laughs> That's the last person on earth I wanted to see because Darlene and I were headed down to the town next door. I was planning on getting drunk. I did not want to see those people from that hospital. I was wearing a t-shirt that had a lady playing an electric guitar. I looked at Darlene the way she was dressed. I think that's the first time in my life I ever felt ashamed of the way I looked. I felt absolutely ashamed. And what I did not want them to see were all the books in our house. Because in our cabin, Darlene still had all those books on reincarnation and out-of-body experiences and Edgar Casey and metaphysics and all these other things. And I didn't want them to come into my house. And so basically I drove them off. I asked them to leave, told me we had an appointment somewhere. And they left. I went down. That's the last drink I ever had more than 30 years ago. Got drunk, had a miserable experience. Darlene and I came back just, just absolutely miserable. And uh, got up the next morning 
And I, I, I said, I, I, I knew I needed something I did not have. And I think for the first time, we began to contemplate the idea of making some real changes, not just in our diet, but in our life. Because now that I'd had an experience with God in the hospital, you know, God's grace was abundant. I'd gotten an experience with it. And now coming back to my life of just gardening, you know, back to our routine life, selling a few p uh, pottery and some paintings and this and that and the other, just business as usual, it no longer seemed fulfilling. There was an emptiness growing. And if you seek me, you shall find me when you search for me with all your heart. God bless you, my friends. You have a nice day.